welcome students to the next video lecture for wireless communications so today we will cover different transmission fundamentals uh, for a wireless communication system so to begin with um, you know any wireless signal that is transmitted from a source like for example an antenna to a receiver like for example your mobile phone or or let's say your uh, Wi-Fi access point and so on uh, are electromagnetic in nature so the signal has uh, varying electronic and magnetic fields that carry the information in that signal so so what what do you mean by a signal so anything that convey an information is a signal and usually a signal is a function of time or space so for example a cyclist that is showing hand signals whether he would go to left or right or straight that is a um, signal the traffic signal is also a signal the ECG signal is also a signal then you can have uh, let's say uh, a signal related to uh, let's say an electronic uh, voltage going up and down uh, following a sinusoid that is also a signal a radar pulse strain can also be a signal so anything that conveys an information so even the stock index prices that goes up and down so those are also conveying some form of information so so but an electromagnetic signal is is something that carries this information over a periodically varying electronic and magnetic fields uh, and then that variations are usually a function of time or space so maybe uh, an electromagnetic signal will look like this uh, sinusoid um, so you, you have you have come across uh, these type of uh, sinusoidal signals before I guess but we will go through um, the more details of those um, in 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 your digital communication and a little bit in in wireless communication class so <clears throat> so yeah so if you summarize what I just said so signals or electromagnetic signals they are usually functions of time and and they can also be expressed as a function of frequency so the signal consists of different frequency components so if you um, if you um, convert the time domain signal uh, into frequency domain by taking the Fourier transform you, you get uh, the, f the spectrum of the signal and that is basically uh, telling you like what are the different frequencies contained in that signal uh, so now let us focus on the time domain concepts first so in the time domain if your signal smoothly varies with time or it's a or it's a continuous function of time without any breaks or discontinuities then it's called an analog signal and in contrary to that we have a digital signal where your signal intensity maintains a constant level for some period of time and then jumps to another constant level so for example in case of a binary digital signal so your signal level can jump between let's say ones and zeros so this is your one sorry so this is your one and then this can be zero and then again and this pattern can repeat like this so so that's a digital signal and there could be a periodic signal so whether it's an analog or digital it can be a periodic signal if 
the signal pattern that 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 you see it repeats over time so mathematically saying it basically means that if you if you observe the signal at a certain interval capital t of time then you you find the same pattern so st uh, repeats after every capital t interval of time so s t plus capital t is equals to st so uh, an example would be a sinusoidal signal so so this is one full cycle of a sinusoid and then it it repeats so whatever was there here at t equal to zero it repeats here at t equal to um, 2 pi so again it starts and then it repeats so basically for a sinusoidal signal you can write s t plus 2 pi is equal to s t similarly for let's say a digital signal um, if you if you consider a square wave so let's say this so this is this is basically periodic repeating patterns of one zero one zero one zero so whatever the signal is here it is repeating the same pattern at this point again at this point so so again uh, you have you can see that it has a period and after every period the signal repeats its pattern so <clears throat> so that we can also have a periodic signal which doesn't follow a pattern or repeat over time um, the peak amplitude of a signal is defined as the maximum value uh, of the signal over time so typically this is measured in volts um, then you can have the frequency of the signal which is basically um, rate in cycles per second or hertz at which the signal repeats and then we can have the period of the signal as we just uh, mentioned in the previous slide so this period is related to the frequency of the signal um, so t is equal to 1 over f and then we can have the phase of the signal which is the measure of the relative position in time within a single period of a signal and then we can also have the wavelength which is the distance occupied by a single cycle of the signal so so basically this is the distance between two points of the corresponding phase of two consecutive cycles so uh, we will we will uh, demonstrate these uh, concepts through a diagram so so let's see so here you have a general sine wave which is expressed by this expression so st is equal to a sine 2 pi ft plus phi so here your a is your amplitude of the signal uh, the f is the frequency of the signal and, and that's this phi is the phase of the signal so so your uh, so this uh, this plot over here, this plot A, this is using your A as one f equals to one hertz and phi is zero. So there is no phase shift of the signal. So um, and your t the period of the signal is one second. So you can see that since your amplitude is one the peak or the maximum value of the signal is one so that is occurring here and then also here and uh, the frequency is one hertz uh, and then the period is one second so you see at every one second the signal is repeating the pattern so this is zero after one second uh, it's it's repeating the same pattern so it's rising from here and again after one second it's rising and repeating the same sinusoidal pattern now if you reduce the peak amplitude to 0 0.5 then uh, uh, and keeping everything else same then you will get uh, you will get 
uh, reduced amplitude signal so here the maximum value is 0 0.5 but then every other thing is same the frequency is same and there is no phase shift and, and then the period is also same so it's still repeating every one second uh, but with a reduced amplitude now if you increase the frequency you double the frequency to 2 hertz then you can see there are more cycles occurring uh, of this signal for a particular time window okay you are, you are watching the signal for the same time window between 0 to 1.5 seconds okay so now if you increase the frequency then you have more cycles uh, within the same time window so so that's the uh, that's the implication of uh, increasing the frequency and since your frequency is increased your period is reduced so your frequency is doubled so your period is reduced to half so every half second now the signal is repeating itself okay and then phase shift if you change the phase shift phi to pi by 4 radians or 45 degrees then uh, what change happens you see uh, compare this signal with with this one the first one so in the first one there were no phase shift and therefore the signal was starting from here from zero okay now since there is a phase shift of pi by 4 there is a lag so the signal is basically starting from some point here and then at zero it has already been started so so this is the this is the value of uh, sine 2 pi f t plus phi at t equal to zero so if you put t equal to zero in this expression then you will get um, so basically let's say s s t at t equal to zero is basically um, a sine phi so if you put t equal to zero in this expression you will just get a sine phi and since your phi is pi by four so basically your a sine pi by four is basically a over square root of two so basically your if your a is 1 then this value will be equal to 0 0.7 okay so basically your amplitude now starts at a value 0 0.7 when your t is equal to 0 so this is the implication of a phase shift so moving on um, let's let's solve this problem to get uh, some some insight into the into the fundamentals so let's say we have a signal which is denoted by this expression and uh, you are asked to decompose this signal into a linear combination of sinusoidal functions and then find the amplitude frequency and phase of each component so this should be straightforward if you just uh, expand this expression then your signal st will be uh, cosine of 100 t plus a product of two cosine functions so this will now if you just uh, decompose this part into a sum of sinusoids so you will basically get uh, so this amplitude will be reduced by 2 and then you have basically um, so cos cosine of a and cosine of b multiplied together will I'm sorry uh, will give you uh, basically if I'm not wrong uh, cosine of uh, 105t um, plus cosine of 95t something like this 
um, so um, so then you can write this expression as a sum of three sinusoidal functions okay so uh, let me see what answer I have so um, so yeah so uh, so uh, yeah I was right so basically uh, you have uh, you have sum of three sinusoids so here you have cosine 100 t then 0 0.05 of cosine 105 t plus 0 0.05 of cosine 95 t so once you get this signal expressed as a sum of three uh, sinusoid so a cosine function is essentially also a sine function with 90 degrees phase shift so basically now uh, you see that this has an amplitude this part has an amplitude 1 this has an amplitude 0 0.05 this is also the same uh, and and if you equate uh, this uh, these terms just before the t's uh, to 2 pi f because the general formula or general representation of a sine wave was a sine 2 pi f t plus psi okay so you can see since these are cosine waves the psi uh, the sorry the phi is already pi by 2 so the phase shift of all this is pi by 2 so this is pi by 2 for all of these and these terms can be equated to 2 pi f because 2 pi f is the term that occurs before t so 95 if you equate this to 2 pi f then you can get the frequency of the third term as 95 over 2 pi similarly for the second term the frequency will be 105 over 2 pi and for this one it will be 100 over 2 pi so moving on uh, let's see uh, let's do another problem so let's consider two periodic functions uh, f1 and f2 with periods t1 and t2 respectively is it always the case that the function ft which is the sum of f1 t and f2 t is periodic if so then demonstrate this fact if not then under what condition uh, is ft periodic so uh, so to solve this problem uh, you have to apply the concepts of the periodic functions so i will i'll go through the solution directly and and, and explain you uh, what's happening but if you wish you can just pause this video for a while and try to solve it yourself i will strongly encourage you to pause this video for a few minutes and try to solve this uh, yourself try to find out the logic um, like what could be the solution and what uh, what are the conditions under which your your ft which is sum of f1t and f2t will be periodic so um, so um, so yeah uh, I, I, I give you a few minutes to pause this video and think over the solution and then I will uh, give you the answer. So okay, so, uh, so the solution is here. So if your F1T is periodic, let's say with period X, then you can write F1T equals to f1 t plus x and then you can also write uh, that this is equal to f1 t plus n x where n is an integer so every integer multiple of the period x your function will repeat itself so so that is the that is the concept of periodicity that we are directly applying so similarly for f2 t let's assume that the period is y and we have a similar uh, expression 
or a similar condition of periodicity for F2. So your F2t is equals to F2t plus y equals to F2t plus my where m is another integer. So now the sum Ft of F1t and F2t this is uh, let's say periodic with period z. So we, we assume that the period of Ft is z and uh, for Ft then we can write then that Ft is equal to f of t plus z from the definition of periodicity. So then uh, since Ft is the sum of f1t plus f2t so basically you can write um, you can write Ft so this expression on the left hand side you just replace Ft with f1t plus f2t and on the right hand side you replace f of t plus z with f1 t plus z plus f2 t plus z. So this equation is satisfied if and only if your, your, your individual um, f1 and f2s are, are periodic with period z. Okay, so f1 t if it is equal to f1 t plus z then only uh, and also together if your f2 t is equals to f2 t plus z so if these two conditions together holds then only you can write this expression so this leads to the condition that z should be equal to n x and m y so z should be some integer multiple of the periods of the individual functions f1 t and f2 t so for for the sum of those functions to be periodic this condition should should hold so this condition must hold for the sum of the two functions to be periodic so therefore in other words uh, you can write that n over m is equal to y over x and if this ratio um, is a rational number then only ft is periodic so moving on with the concepts uh, again um, so so uh, when the horizontal axis uh, is is time when you are representing a signal so the graphs display the value of that signal at a given point in space as a function of time alternatively when the horizontal axis is a space then the graphs display the value of the signal at a given point in time as a function of distance so when you are representing uh, in this way when your horizontal axis is time then uh, the length of one cycle is is your period when you are representing in this way when your horizontal axis is space then the length of one cycle is actually the wavelength so so this is something uh, which you need to remember but most of the times we are representing in this form okay in this form so well, the horizontal axis is usually the time axis so now that we have covered the time domain concepts let's uh, let's move on with the frequency domain concepts so in the frequency domain um, we have we have different terms like the fundamental frequency uh, so when all frequency components of a signal are integer multiple of one frequency uh, that is referred to as the fundamental frequency so uh, if you recall uh, Fourier series so in Fourier series you you used to represent a signal or, or any function like this as a as a sum of some sinusoids with with some um, some uh, scale factor some coefficients where your n would be minus infinity to infinity and then 
you have sine of let's say 2 pi f0 times n uh, t or something like that uh, roughly so just uh, I may not be very accurate with this expression but my point here is uh, that you can represent these signals as some weighted sum of some sinusoids and if you recall uh, you repeat the sinusoids um, as, as, as integer multiples of a frequency f0 and this f0 is your fundamental frequency so 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 then we can also have the spectrum of the signal so this is the range of all the frequencies that the signal contains uh, then we talk about absolute bandwidth which is width of the spectrum of the signal so what is the starting frequency and what is the end frequency uh, you take the difference between the two and you get the absolute bandwidth you can have the effective bandwidth of the signal so this is basically the narrow band of frequencies that most of the signals energy is contained in okay so <clears throat> so if you if you draw the spectrum of a signal let's say again a revise from your signals and systems class so uh, let's say if you have a signal like this a square pulse then the Fourier transform of it was a sync function like this okay and most of the energy of this signal was contained in this main lobe so this whatever be the this frequency let's say uh, let's say between w minus w to w so this is the this is the effective bandwidth as most of the energy of the signal is contained within this zone and then this part is a uh, very small percentage of the total energy of the signal and then finally any electromagnetic signal can be shown to consist of a collection of periodic analog signals at different amplitude frequencies and phases so this is basically consistent with the concept of Fourier series that I just mentioned so you can see that any signal can be can be represented as a combination of periodic analog sine waves at, at different amplitudes and, and different frequencies and then we can always add a phase term here as well so, uh, so different phases so this is what uh, I just talked about so so let's say if you have a sine wave uh, at the top of your picture with let's say sine 2 uh, 2 phi ft then uh, you have another sine wave with the frequency three times of that and then the amplitude is reduced by three times uh, in in this figure then if you add these two sine waves together with the proper adjustment factor then you will get a signal that looks like this now if you keep adding uh, another sine wave with five times the fundamental frequency and one fifth uh, being the adjustment factor then you get this signal and you keep on adding this and if you if you increase the number of terms to infinity okay then you will end up having a square wave like this so basically a square wave has all these frequency components given by this summation term so the fundamental frequency is f and then there are different multiples of f which is denoted by k times f and k has to be odd so if you sum all the odd multiples of the fundamental frequency with proper weights in front of that uh, up to infinity then you will end up having a square wave or in other words a square wave have all this um, all this uh, sinusoid as its as its frequency components so as you see a square wave can be represented as a sum of different 
sine waves, analog sine waves with different amplitudes and different frequencies. So um, we will exploit this concept and, and we will try to solve this problem and understand uh, the concepts better. So let's say we have an approximated square wave with three sinusoidal signals below. So you are asked to calculate the bandwidth and the data rate of this square wave. Okay. <clears throat> so sorry for this typo here. The, so, um, so fundamental frequency is given, which is two megahertz. So let's say, um, so uh, three sinusoids. So this is the case with three sinusoids. You have sine two pi f t, sine two pi thrice f t, sine two pi five f t. So the bandwidth is nothing but uh, the final frequency minus the start frequency. The final frequency is 5f and the starting frequency is f. So 5f minus f. So this is your bandwidth which is equal to 4 times f and since your f is 2 megahertz this bandwidth is 8 megahertz. Now what about data rate? Uh, so you can see that your fundamental frequency is 2 megahertz so your period the capital T is 1 over F so basically this is 1 over 2 second now um, now if you look into this uh, picture so this is basically approximating a square wave almost like a square wave so imagine that this is a square wave with high amplitude for uh, for 0 to 0.5 t and then for low between 0.5 to 1 and then again it repeats so basically um, you have some data here for for this period of time and then you have no data for this period and then again you have data so basically uh, if you consider uh, like this, then you have every uh, 0.5 t seconds, which is which is basically 0 0.25 seconds. So every 0 0.25 uh, second, you have you have one unit of data. So, so your data rate will be uh, basically 1 over 0 0.25. Oh, I'm sorry. This is F. This is in megahertz. So this is actually, um, sorry. So this is basically 0 0.5 into 10 to the power minus 6 seconds that is your t and 0.25 t is basically um, sorry 0.5 t is basically uh, 0 0.25 times 10 to the power minus 6 so your data rate so you have one unit of data every 0 0.25 into 10 to the power minus 6 seconds so your data rate will be 1 over 10 to the power i uh, 1 over 0 0.25 into 10 to the power minus 6 so this is basically 4 megabits per second so basically you have one bit every 0 0.5 t or every 0 0.25 microseconds so therefore your data rate is 4 megabits per second now uh, the second part of the problem is asking you to repeat the same with this square wave of two sinusoids so you you can apply the same concepts and easily solve the second part as well 
so in general uh, what is the relationship between data rate and bandwidth so uh, so greater the bandwidth the higher the information carrying capacity of the signal so <clears throat> so as you saw from the discussions in the last few slides uh, the conclusion is that any digital wave form can be represented as a sum of infinite number of sinusoids so so if you if you just see here this sum is basically running from minus infinity to plus infinity so basically from a theoretical perspective any digital waveform will have infinite bandwidth because from the definition of bandwidth it is the difference between the starting frequency and the end frequency and if you consider this type of uh, representation then your your bandwidth is essentially infinite but the transmission system will always limit the bandwidth that can be transmitted uh, so the effective bandwidth is basically basically this so when you pass a square wave through a transmission system the transmission system will uh, impose some restrictions and because of that you may not get a let's say perfect square wave your square wave may get distorted like this so, okay so the perfect square wave would have been like this but if you pass it through a transmission system you will get a distorted square wave like this or in other words some of the other frequency components get uh, get suppressed and you you may have only three or four um, components present in the signal and based on that your effective bandwidth is getting limited just as the case of this problem where your effective bandwidth is 8 megahertz but theoretically it should be infinite okay so so that's what is said here the transmission system will limit the bandwidth that can be transmitted and for any given medium the greater the bandwidth transmitted the greater the cost so of course if you if you want to design a system so basically this system on your on your right uh, sorry on your left is better is better than maybe this system why because this is representing the square wave in a more uh, clear way than than this one okay and also theoretically uh, this has only two components and and this has three components so this one has more components and this is more close to the actual square wave which theoretically would contain infinite number of frequency components so if you want to design this system then probably you will have to uh, have to spend more because this system is more accurate than than this system so for any given medium the greater the bandwidth transmitted the greater the cost however limiting the bandwidth creates distortion so i think we also covered this so if you limit the bandwidth the more you limit the more distortion you have so this signal has more distortion than this one because you are limiting the bandwidth here in this case the bandwidth is 3f minus f so 2f and and since your f is 2 megahertz so the bandwidth is 4 megahertz which is less than 8 megahertz so if you are limiting the bandwidth you have more distortions here okay so so with that uh, this is the picture of the spectrum of uh, of human speech and music so when we talk over telephone then uh, the actual bandwidth transmitted is much less than the entire spectrum of the of the speech signal so the speech signal here you see is starting from here and, and and ends in here so the bandwidth of the speech signal is roughly this but when you are transmitting it through a telephone channel you are you are just cutting it between these two limits and probably therefore 
when you are listening to a telephone call uh, the sound uh, doesn't uh, doesn't sound very close to the original voice there are there are some dissimilarities okay um, so if some of you have used the old landline telephones then you would be able to appreciate what I'm saying so in in case of music also it, it has even a higher bandwidth but if you are transmitting it through uh, let's say uh, a radio uh, which is an AM radio then you can have only this much bandwidth and if you are transmitting it with um, with an FM radio then you can have a little better bandwidth so for an FM radio you can hear the music uh, in a much uh, better format than let's say an AM radio so this is uh, this is the whole concept here so um, so moving on um, uh, I think uh, I think I'll stop here and I will I'll continue the remaining in the next video uh, I will continue right from this slide in the next video uh, I'll stop here so so thank you i'll see you in the next video